So you want to know how the project setup works. That's fantastic. I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to toggle into Revit and we're going to start a project completely from scratch. So I'm going to open up our starter project file. Right here is my starter project. And the way that you begin this is you always do detach from central and you click open. It's going to bring you into a detached project file. In fact, first step, it's going to ask you to close or open work set. So when you're doing a new project, it's a good idea to just open up everything when you're kind of kicking it off. Later on, you're going to like this because you can actually go in there and turn off work sets or not turn off, but not open work sets that are not really very relevant. So we're going to go ahead and open this up, detach, and please keep those work sets preserved. That's actually a big benefit for you. All right, here we are on that Revit project. I'm going to tell it to ignore the missing links because of course they're missing. It's detached from central. It doesn't know where those links are. We're going to go take care of those in a minute. In fact, step one, I'm going to save this project where it belongs, and then I'm going to go ahead and reload those links. So let's go ahead and save this right now. Now I have a little sample project folder up here, and I'm going to save this project right where that is right now. I'm going to not necessarily replace one of these files, but I'm going to go ahead and give myself the number three on this as the third MEP16 project in this folder. I'm just going to create a brand new file right now. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now, this is a good opportunity, by the way, for you to go ahead and change your save options, determining how many backups you want, um, how you want to open up with those work sets. In this case, by default, I recommend specify. And of course, what the starting thumbnail is, which for us is the starting view. It's already all been defaulted. So all you have to do, you can pretty much ignore this except for the maximum backups and then tell it to go ahead and save. All right, our project's been saved. Now you're probably gonna to wanna to fill out some of that project information. So you can go right here to the project name on this little uh, card, the starter view card. It's actually a, a template, it's a title block. You can click on this and you can type in whatever you want. So this is the uh, you know new widget um, office building, whatever you need. This is the same exact information that's gonna show up on all the rest of your title blocks because this is the real project information or some in some cases sheet information. But you can go through and fill this information out right from here. There's no need to go to any other tabs inside of Revit the vast majority of what you need is right there. Now let's get to the real nuts and bolts of this. I'm gonna to go to my pr uh, project setup level one over here. I've got that view already expanded and ready to go. And I'm just kind of zooming extends out here to make sure I'm seeing everything. There's not a lot to see right now. And that's just because, well, the project just kicked off. This is my template. So let's start reloading an architectural model into here and kind of see what the boundaries of the building are gonna look like. I'm gonna to go to the insert tab. And I'm not going to link a Revit model. It's already there. All I have to do is manage the links and take the individual placeholders here and reload them when they become available from the other, dis uh, the other trades, the other partners on this project. In this case, I have the architectural available. So I'm going to do a reload from on that and just reload that architectural model into here. Let's open that up and give this a second to load. All right, you can see there, my architectural widget engineering building is loaded. It changed the name to reference that exact file. It's got a saved path here relative to my current project location. It's all set up and ready to go. So when I click OK, that model's chilling there in the background. It's ready to be used. Now I want to go in here and I want to kind of take this overall building scope box and crop it around the architect's building model. Generally speaking, the architect's model will probably show up someplace in this area. It might be off center to the right, the left, top, bottom, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's going to be probably in this area someplace, assuming the architect has you know, reasonable standards in their firm and they're basing themselves off the zero point in Revit in some form. So if they don't, of course, I can do some other repair techniques. But at first, what I'm going to do is just kind of take this overall building scope box and drag this in towards the boundary of the architect's project. I don't need to have it so far out in space. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to take every other floor plan view in my project that's pre-existing, all of my overall building plans, and it's going to drag them in and get their boundaries set as well. So for me, there's very little that I have to do. Most of my views are already be preset. And all I have to do is start going in there and drawing once I get this little bit of project set up done. Now also once this is done, I want to coordinate the elevations a little bit, the levels of, of my, my building and make it match up with the architect's model. So I'm going to take the section marker. I like using the section and I'm going to kind of throw this in the middle of the building. This is actually a project setup uh, section view. That won't show up in any other view in my projects. I'm going to take the vertical one, kind of throw it in here as well, just in case for some oddball reason I can't find some levels. Every once in a while you get a project where levels were stretched funky and you have to go try and search for them. These sections are great to really help you find them. But I'm going to go into this section cut view right here. And when I'm in this view, I'm going to see the architect's building is actually relatively short. It's only three levels tall. It's got the first floor, the second level, and a roof level. And I've got all these extra levels up here that I really don't need. 
you can see I've got a bunch of views here. And also if I expand this out and kind of give you some previews of some other sections, you can see I've got floor plans here for HVAC. There's also electrical plan views and whatnot, but they've got levels pre-created throughout the entire building for all of those levels through the vast majority of all of our different views inside of here. Well, I don't need those extra views. I don't need level three through what, eight, I think? I don't really need them. So let's see, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of them right now. I'm gonna take level three, which I know I don't need, all the way up to just below the roof level. In fact, I'm gonna keep the roof, so I'll deselect uh, de that and delete all the rest of these guys. They're all gonna go away. That's gonna take it a second. We'll let that finish up here. All right, that's all finished up. I'm gonna grab the roof level and I'm gonna bring that down to match up with the architect's roof level. In fact, I can just use the simple align command to bring that down. So I'm gonna go ahead and select their roof, select my roof level, it'll align it, they'll be in the same coincident position. Great. The basement level also I'm noticing perhaps I don't need. This might be more of a slab on grade style building, there's no actual sub level. So I'm gonna get all these levels down here and these, these working planes that perhaps I don't need to retain. Give me a second here as I select all these things. We'll just delete this and get rid of those zero B floor plans as well throughout my entire model. You'll see that goes away from my project setup. And I'm left now with level one, two, and roof. Fantastic. One final thing that I have to set up here, notice how my level two and the architect's level two aren't in alignment. They probably never will be because the architect's gonna choose different floor to floor heights each time I start a different project. So that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and select the parts and pieces that I need to bring down to that level. Deselect the things that I don't want moving like the architect's file and my roof level that I've already aligned up. So I've got everything that I need here. I'm just gonna do a simple move command and move all of this down all at once. And the reason why I'm doing that is so I can keep my working planes out here that I'm using for the architect's ceilings until they get their ceilings ready to go. I've got those working planes sitting there at major different elevations that I can associate, say, air terminals or lighting fixtures to, whatever. Now that I've got these all linked up, we're gonna go through the simple collaborate tab here, and I'm gonna do a copy monitor. So I'm gonna copy monitor from the architect's file, I'm gonna make sure that I've got my reuse of elements match exactly option set for my levels right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy the architect's levels. I'm gonna do multiple here so I can grab all of them all at once. So we'll actually just do a big crossing selection. here. I'm gonna get all three levels and finish that up. When I finish that, because my levels already matched exactly, and if my names didn't, that's okay. As long as the physical elevation of them matched, it's gonna go ahead and create that monitor process out here. In fact, if I zoom out, you can see the little heartbeat symbol there showing me that it's now monitoring those. Now that that's all done, I can finish this up. And you know what? I'm ready to start drawing. Now I might do a little bit of other cleanup, like taking the scope box and dragging it down a little bit so it's closer to the building and whatever little housekeeping things you want to do. But you know what? That was, what, eight minutes while talking and I've got a project set up and ready to rock and roll with every single view, more or less, that I'm gonna need for this particular building. All right, hopefully that was a good demo for you guys and you like how project setup works. If so, take a look at some of our other videos out there. Maybe you wanna see how design validation views work so I can do some space planning and whatnot and see how that's gonna work out. Or maybe you wanna know about the gas, uh, custom gas flows or you know the, the discipline coordination schedules. Take and click on the other links here. See what you, uh, see what you wanna see. Again, choose your own demo here. Well, thank you for watching this demo this time and we look forward to seeing you in some of the other sessions we've got.